I can't hear. We're live. Hey, sports fans. Greg Med from Med for Knife, NKT USA. What's going on? Welcome to the holiday show. You know what? <sighs> Fuck that. Welcome to the Christmas show. Thanks for showing up. We're going to sell some knives today. We're going to have a little fun today. We're going to introduce you to some of the folks who are part of the team here. We want to be a little festive. You know, I am not sure who's going to end up being president. It's been a weird year. I mean, whether you're uh, hiding with Biden or you're stumping for Trump, um, it's one of these things where you're trying to uh, hold on to your sanity. And I don't know about you guys, but there's been moments where we've lost it all year long between COVID and lockdown and kids not at school and all of the changes we've all had to make. Um, I think Americans, we're, we've been good at adapting. Um, we've been good at complaining. We've been good at on social media and screaming and howling at the moon a little bit. And I think um, we've, uh, I think we've probably had enough of life. We've been missing weddings and we've been missing funerals. We've had enough of missing life. And I think, uh, I hope what this wraps up, this time of transition every year, I hope this wraps up a year of kind of pain, a year of pain in the ass, and a year of uh, just political angst to which I've never seen before. But you know, I'll tell you what's working. Our country is working. There's corruption at every level. The good fight is being played out and there is not smoke on the horizon, and I haven't seen any of my neighbors eat each other's brains out of each other's skulls. So it's all working at this point. So everybody take a collective breath. Let's get ready for Christmas, Thanksgiving next week. Uh, for those of you Ramadaning, honestly, I couldn't give two shits. But everybody else, let's have a great time. We've got a little Judeo-Christian fun going on in the background. I didn't do Kwanzaa because, you know, I didn't have any Kwanzaa stuff, and I don't know what the Kwanzaa thing would be. But I want to thank... You Kwanzaa celebrators who showed up 15% for the first time in American history and saddled up on the Republican side of the ticket. So thank you for that. I want to thank my Hispanics who showed up. Christmas trees for them. I want to thank my Hispanics who showed up by at the tune of 30% for Republicans. Thank you very much. Um, and I just want to thank my Jews for being here and complaining and arguing with me. So we've got a menorah in the back just for them. So uh, let's, uh, without much further ado, let me thank a few people. I want to thank Jeff for putting all this together, Billy for being here orchestrating, Bobby Bushcraft on the camera. Um, let me see. I don't want to skip anybody. Uh, we've got uh, Lulu underscore Cecilia. Lulu's here. You guys will meet Lulu later on in the show. And uh, let's get to the knives. So let's come right out of the gate with one of the surprises this year. Is there anything I'm missing right now, Jeff? You're just going to yell it off from the side, right? When do we when do we do the light fade? Is that happening at any point? Is someone going to orchestrate that? <laughs> hey folks, this is the Walmart. Tracy Morgan here. We're going to bring up first a Damascus knife you're going to like. Fucking I met Jesus with this knife. Hey, here we go. So this is our uh, gentleman Jack, you guys, in a raindrop Damascus by Chad Nichols. It's got a wood bark pattern put into it. This is what I would call kind of the clashing together of the past and the present. So robust titanium construction, the way we do stuff with some sexy dress to it, some of my design sentiments and style. Um, for those of you who like a flush back, uh, back spring and stop at 90 degrees, uh, this is going to satisfy you. For those of you who want something cool, modern, and technical, this is going to satisfy you. And for those of you who want something old school, like Grandpa would have carried, but just a little bit cooler, that'll satisfy you as well. well. So, that's so that's our gentleman jackets, jackets number, number one. one. Now, for, for those of you who don't know this, I haven't done one of these live shows with this before. Here's the way it works. Video's up the top here, and if you just pan down, it's uncoupled, so you can just thumb down if you're on your phone or if you're on your TV, you can figure it out. If you're on your computer, just do something. I don't know what to tell you. I think uh, Google said, because we know Google's always truthful. Someone going to do the drum? What up? I don't get any of that. So I need an Ed McMahon. Um, I'm waiting for him to step up at some point. So in any case, the way this works is uh, you just scroll down, uh, the see, see the knife. As soon as I start talking about the knife, it pops up live. If you want to buy the knife, just, I think, click on it, right? Yes. Just click on the knife. It'll take you over to purchase module. You can go through and do the buy. Now, if the whole system crashes, we can go old school and kick it at 623-249-4506 here at the main factory number. And you can call over and talk to Beth. You know what? My mom is here. Don't get out of line with my mom. She will bitch slap you through the phone like she did for me. You know, I've been working on being nicer, and my mom said to me, she goes, you came by it honestly. And I'm like, oh. 
So uh, at least my mom, my mom owns up to it. My dad's like, I don't know what you're talking about. My mom's like, I came by it, honestly. So uh, off to number two, we've got a Genesis tie here. I'm sorry. All right, so uh, let me explain this. This is number three, actually. Uh, back up here for a second. So the way this is going to work today is uh, we a few knives we pulled from the show after we'd all set it was all set up. So if you see some non-sequential going on, it's not really a mistake. We just dis- had to skip it, and it's we didn't. Just this one. That's it. This is the only that's time. It. Yeah. Uh, let's never have this bullshit yes. again. All right? No, I'm that's kidding. It. I don't really care. So, anyways, it's a Genesis tie. So this is the thicker dimensions. Um, this is just a beautiful knife, and I need to put my glasses on because. When I hit 40, all of a sudden, I couldn't see anything. Um, it's got pinstriping with a bronze, bronze hard, titanium hardware, S35VN drop point blade, uh, PVD clip and blade to match, in case you can't see that. I'm going to drop this in over here as soon as one of the ladies snags number one and gets it out of the way. Thanks, gals. And here comes number three. Oh, like, like, like that'll, that'll do. do. So, you guys, check that out. It's a really cool knife. For those of you who follow our company for a while, you'll know the Genesis tie is not just floating around. It's not sitting around on shelves. Let's jump into our next one, a Praetorian tie with a sick-ass Vulcan blade. That's Sav. Sick-ass Vulcan blade. It has a Sav blade. It is pretty sick-ass. It's got lovely sculpting. I don't even know what we call the sculpting anymore. They've gotten so good at doing this stuff. Uh, Jeff knows. Jeff, what's this one called? You're talking about the sculpting? Yeah, what's the sculpting called? Predator. This is Predator. Yeah. So for I know you guys ask me about Predator all the time. We've got a Predator sculpt on this one. It's got a lovely bronze, uh, you know, bronze to, um, I don't want to say lavender, uh, what do you call it, indigo. It's got little bronze with a little hint of indigo in it. Titanium hardware, titanium spacers that have all been uh, flame oxidized, a Vulcan blade. The Vulcan ties into the hardware really nicely. This is our number four entry. And... Probably as soon as I pick up a knife, why don't you guys snag the one that's on the wheel, the rotisserie, and get it out of there. Guys, these are this is a really rare knife, um, and uh, you could uh, whip out a pocket knife for the next decade at a knife show, pull that out, and it'll raise eyebrows, and nobody in the crowd will pull one out like it, which is kind of cool. On to number five. An even rarer knife, a micro Praetorian tie. So this is the original tie, Praetorian tie thicknesses, so... 260 blade, 190 scales. This has got a falling leaf pattern on it because it's like leaves falling down and piling up at the bottom. We call it falling leaf sculpt on both sides. Lovely, Anna. I mean, this is just a lovely little knife. Now, if you live someplace that has blade limitations or blade size uh, legalities, this would be a knife to help you skirt some of those. This also, this is a funny way of saying, hey, don't bring any big knives around. This this will, if you open that knife, even though it's a little knife, if you've got Democrats who, like, uh, when you open up a big knife in their office, you maybe you open up a big knife to open an envelope. Like, you're sitting back in your office, and, uh, and you flick your knife open because you just want to open that FedEx overnight package that just showed up with a cool T-shirt in it, and you want to slice open the bag. If there are any Democrats around, when you, there's, sometimes if you open a big knife, a little pea squirts out of them. They have to go change their pants. So this is a nice way. It's a little knife. It's kind of cute. It's unmenacing. Moving on to number six. This is a ridiculously cool knife. We've had a lot of fun with this knife. This is our uh, Slim Midi. So this is our mid-sized Praetorian, done super-duper slim, eighth-inch slabs all the way around. And then this has been done in a um, – uh, what's this PVD color? What are they calling this? Is this rose, rose or – yeah. So it's our new PVD rose gold color. Now we have a copper and a rose rose gold, and I, I can't tell the difference between them. Everybody, well, there's been a lot of confusion as we brought this into the process. But Jeff knows this really well. Sexy little knife. This is number six. It's got opposing black hardware everywhere. So um, let me maybe set this so you can see it a little bit better. How how's that? Does that work? Yeah. Okay. And so that's got beautiful opposing black hardware. It kind of pops off on the gold really nice. It's got a golden black plate. Lovely knife. On to number seven, Praetorian Genesis tie. So uh, what do we call this one? What's this one called? I mean, I should know these. But I mean, you know. We... Yeah, raindrop. That's not raindrop. Is that raindrop. what? 
<laughs> ah, okay, so basically, this one here, the way this one looks, this cool blue one, <laughs> um, it's a gen. Uh, Peaks and Valleys, that's right. I, these names all elude me because I never write these down. So um, this Peaks and Valleys is done, guys. And what's been what's cool about it is the top's been burnished off. So it's got a real contrast between dull and shiny. Uh, and I just think it adds a lot of texture, depth, and a lot to look at when you get a knife like this in your hand. You know, when you take a knife like this out, you guys, uh, in, in, in knife world, you're, you know, it, you'd be in rare company if to have somebody pull out a knife that rivals the coolness of that. There are guys who make knives that rival the coolness, but you will almost never be around them. You have to be like in a certain little table at Blade Show. All right, here we go. On to number eight, Praetorian Genesis tie. Now, I would not, by any stretch of the imagine, any stretch of the imagination, call this a plain Praetorian Genesis tie, but it is a standard offering of ours. It's been faced in bronze anode, black PVD S thirty five VM breaker and blade, opposing black PVD hardware, and this is a fast nice, fuck out, fuck all sexy. It is a fuck all sexy knife. Number eight. Hey, you guys, uh, let's take a quick break here. Uh, we'll get back to the knives. Lindsay, how are you? I'm great. Everybody say hi to Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. Hey, we got a, it's nice having a peanut, peanut gallery. So uh, Lindsay is in her second week on the job with us. Yep. How long have we known each other now? Almost a year. Almost a year. So she, Jeff and I sneak off to have lunch, and she has been a bartender at one of our favorite places to go for lunch. And she just takes great care of everybody, and everybody really likes her and has nothing but awesome, awesome things to say about her. But they make her wear a mask all the time, and she's a hardcore right-winger. So I was like, let's recruit her ass down here. So we actually think she's going to turn into a great uh, sales component to the company as we grow and move forward. Um, so we snagged her for that, and right now she's going around to every uh, station in the shop, and she's learning every station. So... She did uh, grinding and surface grinding and water jet first. She's on to her second station now, which is machining. So you're wrapping up week one of machining, or you're wrapped up. What do you think? I love machining. It's fun back there. But I look forward to what's next after grinding. <laughs> you guys, I've seen her do handstand push-ups at this CrossFit gym where we both go together. She will do handstand push -ups. Is everything working? Yeah. I just wanted everyone to know one thing. When what? the knife gets sold, the add to cart will go away, and that's how people know. Okay. When the knife gets sold, I've just been told by our producer, Billy, that by Billy, that uh, when the knife gets sold, it will no longer be able to go in the cart. So if you're trying to, it's malfunctioning, it means somebody bought it. Now we know. Is there any that's goddamn... What inventory, that's what inventory quantity one means. Is there any air conditioning in this joint? No. I'm, I'm fucking sweating bullets. Can yeah. we get a couple of the coolers on maybe and open up that door over there? Would, yeah. would want somebody in the factory do that for me? Not the cooler right above me. Maybe a couple of the coolers over here, please. I'm sweating bullets, and we're in the first eight minutes. Uh, so anyway, it's been great fun. She does uh, uh, handstand push-ups. And, oh, wait a minute. How many dead hang? How many strict pull-ups can you do? Like 15. <laughs> and, uh, how many chest of bars can you do? In a row? Yeah. Like without letting go of the bar? Yeah. Maybe five. Five. Really? I thought you could do way more than that. I haven't tried. I mean, that's my guess. All right. You're awesome. Uh, we'll uh, introduce you to Lulu here in a few minutes, and let me jump into number nine now. She's going to see me at the next class. She's going to be like, what do you mean? How many chest of bars can I? I don't know. Let's do chest of bars, and then I'm going to be hurting for a week. So uh, Micro Praetorian with some really cool texturing done in the, uh, uh, in the fuller slide on it now, you guys. You know, what's happened here is the team has gotten really good at making knives and doing customization that I used to just one off and make up. They have gotten really good and they're bringing their own style and flair to this. You see Joe, you see uh, Jason Fish, uh, you see his nephew Spencer, you see these guys all throwing hands into this. You see uh, Jason Langston's laser work. You can feel the knives who put this together, all the hand craftsmanship that's gone into fitting this stuff together. Every knife's been hand fitted and uh, hand made it up, and they're just lovely little tools. So, number nine, Micro Praetorian tie. Okay, let's move on to number 10. 
Oh, this is this knife just makes me happy down inside. This is the one that paid for the building that we're in, the paid paid for the building we're moving to. A Praetorian tie and drop point. This is a D2 blade, kicking it old school. It's got an American flag on it, tumbled sides. This would be a using knife. Uh, this is more than a gentleman's knife. This is a working knife, and it says, I care about the stuff that I carry, and I care about the work that I do, and I only want the best things in my pocket. Number 10, super cool, Praetorian Tide Drop Point in D2. I want to talk for a minute about D2. Guys always ask me about all the metals. There's a lot of um, metallurgy gayness. Now, I don't mean this kind of gay. I mean this kind of gay. This steel shit doesn't matter that much. And there's guys going to bristle all over hell and back. What matters is, uh, was it heat treated properly? What matters is, is it straight? What matters is, is it the right metal? What matter for, for, for your, if you have high performance needs, what matters is, can I sharpen it by myself? Or do I have to put it in the mail and send it to an expert to sharpen it? You know, all those things add up. People ask me all the time. I just got a text from a guy a while ago. Greg, what's better? 3V or S35VN? And I go, well, let me see. I make about 2,000 3V knives a year, so maybe those are my shitty ones, and the S90V are my good ones. The answer is, when you get up into that high-performance stratosphere with knives, the metal, if you're in a saline environment, you want that stainless, and the stainless comes with some drawbacks. It's much harder to sharpen. It's got some other issues also. Um, if you want ultimate toughness and you're not as worried about corrosion resistance because you're in a part of the world that's very dry, well, then I would go with 3D and not worry about the corrosion resistance. So the answer is, what's a better car, Rolls Royce or Porsche? Depends. You're going on a road trip? You're going to go winding in the mountains? Or do you want to drink champagne and sit in the back while somebody else drives? They're both spectacular, right? Right tool for the right job, right steel for the right knife, right steel for the right user, for the right part of the world, for the right mission. And if you want all around general stuff, D2 is fantastic. S35 is fantastic. 3V is fantastic. If you're going to be working down at a, uh, uh, in a port around ships, I wouldn't have 3V just because it's going to rust. It doesn't like that saline environment. Okay, uh, we have now reached a point in the show where we're going to talk about a new knife. Oh, let's see. Jeffrey, new knife number one. Bring it up. Goldie Glocks, you bringing it? No, bring the D. All right, guys. So our first knife. Thank you, Jeff. Can I have the sheath? Yeah. Sheath for her pleasure. Ribs for <laughs> You know, when I hired Jeff, I thought he was going to be this corporate steadying force for me. <laughs> He's like, ah, I'm in small business America, man. I can let it rip. Uh, you guys, this is a really cool knife. Uh, if you, has anyone ever seen this knife before? Oh my God, we're doing a world premiere of the deep. Check it out. So uh, we also have this with the blue sheath. Do we have any blue sheaths around? We don't. There's somebody with a blue sheath. Somebody grab a blue sheath, and there's one on my desk. So, guys, it won't fit the knife, but you can see what it looks like. This is the deep. I want to tell you a little bit about it. It's a hollow handle, S35 or. Uh, What's this one? This is a CPM 20 CV. This is a 20, yeah, this is a CPM 20 CV knife. Um, quarter inch thick blade nominally. Um, it's got a big flat grind on it. Greg, air mail. No, 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 no. Just hand it around to the ladies, please. This is a prototype. It's not going to be exactly like this. Yeah, so these are the two sheaths that are available for the knife. You can order them with one or the other. You see the, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, and then we've got a G10 handle that's got layers in it that's been sculpted. Um, this is just a lovely knife. It's got a waterfall, um, fuller groove, and titanium hilt. Maybe you zoom in with the camera and see how well fitting, how tightly fitted that hilt is to the blade. Guys, it is surprisingly hard to make titanium made up that well and alan and steve and jason the guys in the machine shop have done a fantastic job at that fish he went through and uh has made it all these surfaces up so they're all they've all been uh co-ground so they're all really co-planar just a lovely lovely knife it's got everything going for it it's a spectacular size and i can imagine 
I just think about like a Mako getting a little too close, getting a little too frisky, getting a little too naughty, and popping a Mako right behind the eyeball on the top of its head with this little plume of blood, and you get great shark steak that night. Oh, you know, where's that little clear plastic stand? Do you have any of those? Oh, thanks. Let me, let me set this up so the guys can see it a little bit better. We got a minute. All right. I think we got it. So uh, a, a quick anecdote. You guys want to hear a quick story? So I'm out with a friend of mine who was, uh, he was KIA, killed in action. They were, they were toe tagging him, and he, he moved a little bit. And they found out he was alive. Kind of reasonably well-known story in the Marine Corps. Anyways, we meet up out in San Diego. We hop in this boat. We out, I go out. I think it's uh, called the Coronado Island. Sea of Cor is that Sea of Cortez or what is that out there off San Diego? Uh, anyways, we went out there and we were chumming. and We were looking for sharks. And all of a sudden, some sharks come around. And we get these makos come around. I got pictures of the whole thing. So the sharks come around. And uh, I said, you know, I, I reached over to him. I said, hey, uh, I, I said, hey. Mark, I, I want to punch a shark. I just always thought it'd be, I just want to punch a Mako. You know, like, he says, uh, you see that broken windshield? He goes, my wife and I were Mako sharking, and we uh, got one on the line, and we got him in close a little too soon, and he swam towards the boat and came up out of the water at 50 miles an hour and hit the windshield and broke the windshield. They're the fastest creature in the water. And I said, does it? I said, was that meant to scare me? And he said, yeah, he goes, you don't want to mess with the Mako. So anyways, the Mako comes around. And as he comes by, I reach over the side of the boat and I punch him right on the top of the head. And I was like, I hit him as fast as I could. And as my hand came back, his teeth came up and almost got my hand. And I went, oh, shit, game on. So I said, hey, I'm going to get that. He says, oh, don't get that. I said, I'm going to get that. And I reached over the gaff and I snagged that mako right under his jaw and I pulled him up on the boat. As soon as he got up on the boat, he started flopping around and he came about like this hot up the deck. And he yells at me, he goes, you're going to sink the boat. There's other sharks around. So uh, I jump up on top of the shark like this, and I get his head in the corner, and I take out my Praetorian tie, snap the blade out, and I pop him in the back of the neck. Blood goes everywhere. The shark's up, and we ate the shark that night. He said, that's the craziest thing I've ever seen. And there was this other shark there, and I reached over with it, and I pulled another one in, did two in a row like that. I, I've shown Jeff the picture. So yeah, if you ever have a, a, a fight with a shark, trust me, that knife or a Praetorian tie right behind the head right here will stop them from flipping and they can't reach around and bite you. What I didn't know when you hold a shark by its side, it can reach all the way around and bite its own side, and, which means it can get you. So you're in a fight if you get in a fight with a shark. Get, take out a Praetorian tie, stab him in the neck or the deep. Moving on to number 11. Praetorian Genesis tie. This is a tumbled, boy, I got to put this under a light. It's a bronze, blue violet, blue. what, what? Blue and bronze anno. Blue and bronze anno. There we go. I just got, I, I was saying bronze and violet. Black PVD, S35 VM blade, pretty sexy knife. Number 11 with opposing hardware. Thank you, guys. I'm going to let, the Praetorian stands on its own pretty nicely. Number 12 today, guys, in my hands. A fully sculpted Praetorian Genesis tie. Bronze. Peaks have been... Predator. It's got Predator sculpting on it. It's been bronzed. Peaks have all been burnished and then anode. Black PVD. This is a CPM 3V blade. Opposing hardware. Sexy little guy. Goldie Glocks, what's yeah, what's going yeah. on, man? Nah, he been. Whoa, that just gave it away. What? What's going on, man? Oh, no, man. How you doing? You doing a knife giveaway? Yeah. What's a knife giveaway? Oh, it's, it's something special. Man. You guys, this is Goldie Glocks here visiting us. What's he up? comes in from Detroit once a year. Just got some ballots. Yeah. Yeah, how'd the election go? Yeah. It was good, man. How much did you get paid to vote? Seven dollars. Uh, just one time? Yeah. Did it? it? Three times. Three times? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Who'd you vote for? Yourself and who else? Whoever they told me to, man. Whoever they told you to? Yeah. yeah. You just did that three times or? Huh? Did anybody else do that? So how much did they pay? Seven dollars. Three times? Yeah. So you made $21? Yeah. Was there any other money to be made? What's that? 
Was there any other money to be made? Was there more money to be made? Yeah. Or just those three votes? Yeah, yeah. That doesn't seem very corrupt to me, just three votes no, for you. No, no. Did you know anybody else that had this happen? Yeah. Who, who else had that happen? Everybody. What do you mean, everybody? I mean, like, you know, like, like 500 people, man. How many Mrs. Goldilocks are there? Like 300. You got 300 uh, least, man. ladies working for yeah. you? Yeah. All right. Any of, uh, how about little Goldilockses? Who knows? Right. Do, <laughs> I mean, that you know of. Oh. How many do you know of? 17. Did any of them vote? Yeah. How many of them? All of them. Everybody yeah. once? Mm -hmm. Okay. At least. Did all the money have to go through you? Yeah. Okay. So you got all the money yeah, from everybody. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Who are we giving this knife away to? That one? Oh, yep. I think we should give it away. Uh, I think we should give it away to, to uh, some other black person. Let's give a knife away to a black person. Okay. Listen, I don't have enough black people carrying my knives. African Americans, folks of color, or slightly off white. So listen, here's what we'd like you to do. We'd like you to send an email. Uh, are they calling us or emailing us? Email. So it's timestamp. To whom? To whom? Uh, MKT Sales. All right. MKT Sales. Here's the thing. If we would like someone black, off black, recently black, of liberated slave lineage, we don't care, some sort of African descent, American, African American, American, whatever version you want to call. Wants to be black. What's for, some, wants not to be somebody black. who wants to be black. Jesus. Not somebody who wants to be black, like Rachel Dolezal. <laughs> not her. If you're Jewish, that doesn't count as black, FYI. And if you relate as black or identify as black, that doesn't count either, Goldie Glocks. No, I want another black person carrying a knife. I'd actually like to be a black female. So if I could black black female and a lesbian, if I could get three, yeah. if I could do the hat trick yeah. of interesting. Yeah, that's it right okay, or just a regular yeah. African-American person who lives anywhere in the country. So all you need to do is to send a picture and uh, we'll give you a free knife. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I don't know if this is legal or not, it's totally fun. I hope nobody's offended. We're just having a hoot. Yeah. Um, are we going to, who's next, Jeff? Who are we going to give a knife to uh, next? Somebody Jewish or what? Uh, well, uh, to be determined. To be determined. All right. We'll see based on that. Listen, so we thought since we didn't have any Kwanzaa stuff, we'd come out of the gate and give a knife away to someone of uh, the non white persuasion, non Hispanic persuasion, non Jewish persuasion, and non identified persuasion, actual person of color. Folks else would this happen come on lighten up everybody people are dying here we go let's move on to number 13 lucky 13 knife number there's people in the background right now cringing <laughs> like holding their face i actually saw somebody just run out shaking their head and i saw somebody in the parking lot run by on fire what are you gonna do <laughs> uh red white and blue flame coming off of it it reminds me of our country slightly on fire but still badass a praetorian tie Kicking it old school, number lucky 13. Here we go. <laughs> All right, number 14. Praetorian Genesis with a falling leaf pattern. It is a lovely bronze CPM 3V black Tonto blade and has the bank vault flack that I really like from a knife. Guys, you haven't met Lulu yet. We're going to bring her out. Lulu, come on out. Hey, guys. What's going on? How are you? Good. Good, Good to be here. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself. You guys, Lulu's going to maybe do some social media for us, and she's kind of finding out what sort of fringe lunatics we are right now. Do you want to plug your Instagram thing to everybody? Yeah, it's Lulu underscore Cecilia. Um, you know, met Greg and the team, and really excited to work with them on some marketing, social media. Uh, personally, I hunt, I competitive shoot, uh, fish, uh, lots of outdoor stuff. Love to just be one of the female uh, individuals in male-dominated industries. Apparently, just happened that way. <laughs> so, did, did your did your dad hunt, or the yeah. who got you into hunting and all that? Uh, actually, a boyfriend in college. So, thank you so much. No longer dating, but took with the hunting and the fishing with me. So, wait a minute. You're no longer dating. Does that mean you're married, or what's the, we, no we don't we, we don't know your personal story. <laughs> you're no longer dating him. No longer dating the one who got me into hunting and fishing, but have him to thank for. Goldie, Goldie Glocks is trying to get you a job. I wouldn't get a job with <laughs> that crazy bastard. So um, are, do you, what, what part of, do you live here in town? 
Uh, I do, yep, live in Scottsdale. All right, cool. How long you been in Arizona for? I'm originally an Arizona native and then lived all around for a while. Went to college in Texas, then lived in Seattle for a while. Got the heck out of Seattle real quick and back in Arizona. Cool, People's Republic of Seattle. All right, is it time for a shot? I think it's time for shots. It's time for a fucking shot, everybody. Let's drink up some Jack Daniels. Who wants a shot? Holiday shots, you guys. There's people waving in the background. The guy sweeping the floor wants one. Lulu, are you having any? I'm okay. Thank you. All right, that's fine. I'm going to have that one. Anybody else? Lindsay, are you having a little bit? Lindsay's like, no, I'm not having anybody. A oh, cameraman, you can't have it. You can have some. Hey, this is a little shout out to Monkey Edge, Monkey Depot. Glass he gave me with a little bullet coming out. Why don't you have a little celebratory holiday uh, swig there, okay? I'm going to have a little uh, snort of this myself, and I'm going to hang out with you guys. Uh, let me get a little taste of this. Yum. If it was uh, 1974 and Dean Martin was here, I'd be smoking a cigarette. Moving on. Number 15, Praetorian. Thai, fully sculpted, S35 VM blade. This has just got a lot of bitchin' uh, blue and bronze poking through. Very cool pattern. Let me get it in the light so you guys can see this. Number 15. All right. Number 16. Guys, this is the first knife I ever designed. This is a TFF1 in its original configuration. 190 blade. Uh, eighth inch thick, 125 scales. It's got a falling leaf pattern on it. It's got black PVD all around. It's been pinstriped, just a posing clip, just a beautiful knife. This is a working knife. Um, this big knife drops into the pocket, just disappears, and when you need it out, it's just a, just a fantastic knife. The guys who carry these are in love with them. Now, I did Fat Daddies. For those of you guys who like it thick, like it fat, like it bad, guys like that, but this is my choice of how this knife ought to be. It's just lovely. Okay. TFF1. An original configuration. How about a, a quick tour around the man candy? We got a few things out of my office here, you guys. So you might recognize, let's see. Uh, uh, Jeff, tell us about the Gerstner boxes a little bit, would you? What model? Do you remember what model this is? 30 years old. I think mine's about 50 years old. And uh, I don't know if you know about the wood and all that kind for, of stuff. For those of you who don't know, so the deal used to be when you were a machinist, you would show up to apply for your job and you would bring your tools with you and they'd walk you out onto the factory floor. If you showed up with a Gerstner, it basically meant, you know, it's like showing up with a really nice handmade satchel if you're a banker that has custom shoes and a a perfectly appointed uh, a bespoke suit. For a machinist to show up with a Gerstner box says, I'm accomplished, I care about my stuff, I'm ready to work, and I only use the best. That's what the boxes spoke to. We're actually doing a lovely collaboration with them. They're making a custom knife carrying case just for uh, Medford Knife and Tool. We hope it'll be something that kind of works its way through the knife world and you guys enjoy. We've got that in the background. We've got some firearms sitting around, some whiskey, uh, my first air show airplane, uh, an antique light off of a runway. This is my first helmet uh, that I flew with and a uh, bulldog for a little shout out to the Marine Corps. Let's pop back over some of the man candy in the background and let's get back to the knives. Number 17, Praetorian tie, drop point. I believe we call this uh, virus. I believe this is called virus, this pattern that's on here. Is that what it's called, Galaxy? Yeah. All right, so this one's Galaxy. See, uh, you know, I know all this stuff. I just don't know what it's called. Number 17, that's the one. Number 18, Praetorian tie drop point. Micro Praetorian tie drop point. You guys will notice we changed the fuller grooves on these over the last couple of years, and it's because on a pure radius, you don't get a sharp enough groove to get your thumb into when you go to open it. This, you get a little bit of a sharp lip you can get your thumb into, so it works really nicely. Number 18 is a lovely little micro-praetorian tie. 
Guys, with the holiday show, what we wanted to do is we wanted to bring our flagship model dressed up for the people who are always kind of hawking us all year long. They want a custom one. They want it this. They want it that. They want it now. Wives calling us up saying, hey, I need something for my husband right away. People calling up saying this, saying that, saying the other. And now they could get our flagship model right before Christmas. These will all ship out this week. Just scan down. Keep with us. As soon as I start talking about the knife, it pops up live and you can buy it. Number 19, Praetorian tie, falling leaf, bronze, drop point, PVD. Need the glasses because I'm an aging man. Uh, CPM 3V blade and drop point. It's got blast and ground, so it's got nice con uh, contrast, a lot of black on it, all opposing, which makes all that stuff pop out and really dresses up nicely. Number 19. 90. Und 20. Number 20. Was that the call there, Jeff? Have you given me the call? We're channeling Sean Connery. Your mother's a whore. <laughs> oh, you the knife? Never mind. Lights back up, please. Put the camera back up here for a second. So I saw this, you know, you see the Jeopardy thing on Saturday Night Live, and it's got Sean Connery there and Will Ferrell as being Alex Trebek. And uh, your mother's a whore. It's my favorite. So we thought we would do a little homage to him uh, throughout the show here today, maybe. Just because he, he died recently, and he represented a lot of what formed pop masculinity in the 1950s and 60s. Studly guy. Uh, Praetorian tie, you guys. CPM 3V blade. This has basically got a lot of black going on. We should just call this our Detroit finish. Lovely knife. Number 21. Oh, my God. What do we call this thing? Oh, that's right. All right, guys. Another new knife. The first for you right here. Uh, we call this our Air Jack. It's our Gentleman Jack with G10 sides. Same lovely hologram blade. 90 degrees stop and start. This knife, I don't know if you can hear this. At the halfway point, it's super flush. At the close, it's flush. At the open, it's flush. It's just the way it's supposed to be if you have some of those old-fashioned sentiments. A couple little design points about this knife. You know, we could have put Made in USA somewhere on it, nice and cheap. We wrote in the original Constitution scroll, Made in the United States of America, because we fucking love this country and everything about it, even the mess that it is. The snail nick runs off the top. It actually, you can just grab it. You don't need to put your thumb down. You know what I've not? I've never liked on nail nick slip joints, having to put my thumbnail in. Have you ever done that? You peel your thumbnail. And a lot of guys don't have like big, thick nails. I've got pretty thick nails from like, you know, kind of doing handwork my whole life. If you don't have big things, or ladies carry, and most ladies don't have nails, they want to stick into a slot of metal. So I ran this all the way off the top. It joins up at the top in a nice little notch, and you can grab it right by the notch and open it up. A lot of people really like a, this is a, kind of an old-fashioned sentiment, but the 90-degree stop point is a big deal for safety. It doesn't just slam shut on your hand uh, w w if you're holding it or you're opening it up. It's got a little spot where it wants to rest in the middle, so you can kind of change your grip and control the close or the open on it. So really cool knife. I don't know. Has anybody weighed this thing yet? 1.9 ounces. 1.9 ounces. One ounce less than the Gentleman Jack titanium. It, it's a ridiculously light pocket knife that'll disappear, which is why we called it the Air Jack. Not to be mistaken with the Air Jordan. But he would carry it. He would definitely. Like, if you were MJ and you were going to take it from the top of the paint and bust the glass out, this was, this was not going to stop you from getting there. It, it weighs nothing. This knife is so light, it's almost like this knife here uh, is going to have a baby. And it's like, just a little bit, it's eaten for two. I don't know. There's something about this knife that's it's foreign to me because it's so light. But for everyone who says, oh, your knives, I really like your knives, and they're kind of heavy. And, uh, uh, we made this knife super light. You can also put it in your go bag, you know, when uh, pounds become ounces and all of that. How's that phrase go? Uh, gram, ounces, ounces, pounds, pounds, pounds. Pounds is pain. It's when you want to keep it really light and you still want to bitch and med for knife. And we've done it old school with a hollow grind. So lovely, lovely new knife. This is our Air Jack.
Is that thing for sale? It is. That's for sale. So the very first one, that's the first one, right? Oh, that one is not for sale. It's available to order on the website. It is available to order on the website. That very one will probably go in my safe for the future museum when I'm dead. Here we go. Moving on. Number 21, Praetorian Tie. And ooh, what are we calling this crater thing again? Blue Crater. Blue Crater. Rush Blue Peaks. Just to give you an idea how this is done, it's all by hand, plunged, then it's all brushed off on top and rounded. The knife feels so soft in the hand, but it's got a little bit of grippy to it. And then the top's left shiny. It's got an iridescent quality to it. Sides are polished. Just, that's a rock star standout knife anywhere you go. Lindsay, what models have you been making? Yep. And we're just about to start the process. Cool. What what have you learned about doing that? I mean, what's the what's the biggest surprise so far? I mean, there's just really high tolerances on every single measurement that we do here. Like you've been doing it for a week now. What kind of tight tolerances? Within thousands of an inch. Inside a thou? Yes, inside. Any what's the tightest tolerance you've uh, encountered so far? Within like two thousand. Inside of 1,000? Yes. Okay. Anything inside a half? Not that I specific, specifically have measured, but I'm sure. All right. Cool. Yeah, a lot of tight tolerances, you guys. I know a lot of times we're using plus minus pins and we're chasing inside of a half thou. Lulu, what kind of what kind of stuff do you use a knife for when you're out there banging around in the field? A couple different knives for hunting when you're skinning and cleaning an animal. What's the last animal you skinned and cleaned? When did you do that? Uh, a couple weeks ago in South Dakota. I went out there for the pheasant opener. How many did you get? Uh, three a day is the personal limit, so I was out there for two days, so six personally. So you got your limit both days? Yep. Cool. Were you working dogs or just go for it? Just, uh, we had one dog and then just the humans pushing through some brush, so. So you say we. Did you go with friends, family, or meet up with hunting, hunting gals? Yeah, luckily I have some friends out in South Dakota, so I got to go out there. Never been out there previously, and not much reason to go other than pheasant season and waterfowl, in my opinion. But right. Well, Mount Rushmore. Oh, true. Yeah. You want to check that out, the Black Hills area. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, hopefully we'll get some knives in your hands. Number twenty-two, Praetorian Genesis tie. How many knives total do we have today, Jeff? Thirty-one. Oh, so we're cranking right along. And how's my pace? That's wonderful. Okay. American flag in full color. CPM three V blade. Drop point Tonto, full tie thickness, Praetorian Genesis, fantastic knife. It's even got a flag on the backside, which we rarely, rarely do. That's number 22, which we rarely, rarely do. That's number 22. Number 23, you guys, old school, working knife. You'll notice a lot of times you use contrast. We like to bring in, we like to bring in whatever's out on the blade. We like to bring it here onto the hardware, and then we like to do the blades with some sort of contrast that we can make the clip pop out from. So you can see we've tied the front into the back with the flaming, the colors, and we've tied the blade into the handle with shiny uh, tie and stainless steel hardware. A lovely Praetorian tie, flame scale. Give away right there, that's right. Number 23, knife giveaway. You know what we're gonna give away um, if you wear body armor for a living, this is a great knife for you to carry. Easy to put on any of your Molly compatible gear. And uh, it's one of those knives that you can uh, make the argument that it's utilitarian, uh, but snap it out when you really need it in close for uh, cutting either a reverse or forward grip. I really like the knife. I think it's nasty. Um, and I know my guys who like to sneak one more weapon into their gear when they're, when they're gunslingers to have one little thing that's kind of a last minute, last resort. Uh, tactical weapon in close. The Krambit is great for that, either in the forward or reverse kind of traditional grip. So, what's the email? MKT Sales. MKT Sales at MedfordKnife.com. MKT Sales at MedfordKnife.com. A picture of you in your tech gear. It needs to be you. We'll verify it's you. First one that is there and verifiable. The knife is yours. We'll ship it out to you. Hope you enjoy. We'd love to see a picture of it on your kit making its way out into the world. You know, if there's anything people have forgotten in 2020, there is a quiet army of American citizens out there looking out for each other. Whether it's our police and law enforcement who have 
taking it in the ass this year. They keep a lid on the madness of a free culture. And uh, maybe we should just give them a little quick salute here for the holidays and hope everyone gets home safe. We've also got our firemen, our first responders, our paramedics, everybody who's out there really still doing their jobs while other people are hiding at home, wearing little masks while they go running. Uh, they wear the little masks when they get in their car by themselves and they go down the road so they can wear their mask and virtue signal to all their fucking Karen friends. There are first responders out there just taking care of people who have had a heart attack, who've been hit in car accidents, and uh, they're out there exposing themselves to all of those things. And uh, you want to know where the truth is? Ask them because they go, you know what? It's a really tiny risk and we still have to do our job. And we all need to remember that. We need to remember that when we think about Armistice Day from World War I. We need to remember that when we think about the final days of World War II. We need to remember that when we wrap up peace and containment around the world, that we don't run from a little bit of danger. And it's dangerous being old. It's also perilously dangerous to be poor and to be broke and to be unemployed. And everybody sitting at their little desks with their cushy little white collar tech jobs needs to remember that at Christmas time while they're all whacking off from Googleville. A third of America makes a job with their hands interacting with people every day and we can't shut them down to help them. Okay, Merry Christmas. Number 24, Praetorian, Todd, um, uh, Praetorian T. I gotta put my glasses on again. Give me a second. Praetorian T uh, in S35 VN. Drop point, PVD blade. It's got sculpting on it. It's got some handwork for contrast. Black and um, uh, indigo uh, and blue. Just lovely, sexy, usable, and super thin knife. Very, very pocket-friendly big boy knife. Number 25, Praetorian tie. Guys, this is the, one of the sexiest Praetorian ties you'll ever pull out of your pocket and show to somebody. It's got a dark and brooding Vulcan finish on it, S35 VN blade. It's got flame opposed bronze uh, titanium hardware. It's got bronze pinstriping all the way around the edges, which is really hard to pick up on the camera, on the clip as well. Bronzed out hardware, just fantastic knife. Number 25. Did I say, oh, did I say S35? It's 3V. Sorry, everybody. This one's 3V. The description's right. The owner of the company's wrong. Number 26. Oh, I love this knife. So I call this reticulated, okay? So the finish on the side of a giraffe, they call reticulated, or it's a reticulated pattern, and this reminds me of that. This has got a reticulated grind free sculpt on it that's been burnished on top, contrasting anode onto it, S35DN, satin blade, flame treated hardware just a world class hot little knife that's number 26 we got a new model coming up right there mm, yeah yeah oh yeah so okay <laughs> this is a uh what do we call this a, uh praetorian swift fl flipper it's a flipper fl this is a Flipper FL. This is a Praetorian Swift with a flip cam. And it flips. For those of you who are super gay about this, like really gay, like, oh, it's got to flip this way or he's a, he's a dummy. I need my knife to flip just like this. It's the only way it works. I only buy knives from this maker because it has to flip straight up in the air. It's perfect. With, if you need your wrist, it's awful. They're stupid. Medford doesn't know what they're doing. <laughs> There's people throwing up in the background. Praetorian uh, Swift FL Flipper. Flipper FL. Uh, a quick tour of the knife, okay? Full aluminum integral backstrap chassis with a titanium frame lock and titanium bent clips, uh, uh, spring clip. Just to circle the wagons on this. One to, uh, what's the blade thickness? Is 125 on this, right? Or is it 150? 125 on the blade. And then the handles dimensions are 150 thick. Uh, it's got a really simple, clean look to it. It's a really solid, very simple. 
It's got all of the styling of our Praetorian tie, our Praetorian design, but in a really pocket friendly. I mean, take a look at the difference in size between the original Praetorian and the Swift. Also because the aluminum integral chassis, it's super light, really tough. This has actual uh, type three class two hard anno on it. So a really tough skin of anno on it. Fantastic new knife. And uh, maybe I need the little plastic thingy, Bobby. Where's that thing at? Oh, yeah. Oh, cool things. All right. There we go. Sexy knife. Okay, moving on. Number 27. This is a TFF1 Fat Daddy. It's fat handle, fat blade, my big fat dimensions. It's been melted around the edge. It's got an organic, I don't even know what to call this. It looks almost like coconut. It's almost got like a coconut, coconut sides. I don't know what they're calling it. I'm going to call this a coconut fat daddy. They called it bark. We called it leaf. They called it bark. They called it bark and leaf. But guess what? My name's on the front of the building. It's a fucking coconut fat daddy. So for you brothers out there who want a coconut fat daddy, here it is. It'll go with your big chest and your big arms. And your skirt and your coconut. Number 28, Praetorian tie. Oh man, this is another one of these craters that's been uh, hand worked, been melted on the top, guys. If you look at this up close, it's been melted all by hand and then colored black and opposing bronze. There's a lot of texture and it makes all of these pieces jump out. So when you, you could kind of look at it all the time and see something a little bit different. Praetorian tie, number 28. Thanks, Lulu. Boom. Number 29. American Flag Fat Daddy. Uh, let's pause for a moment. A commercial break from your sponsor, Medford Knife and Tool. Um, I have a couple of knives I'm going to kind of sneak. I was going to sneak by everybody. So at the last minute, I asked for a couple of knives to be laid out. And they're not on the list. You'll have to call up, but you can call up. And uh, we'll be able to uh, get you a couple of unique pieces. No, we don't want to bring them out yet. Don't bring them out yet. Oh. When, when I'm ready, at the end. I don't want to. Oh, I got all excited, man. I know you got worried. You got excited, but we don't want to do. You don't do the money. You don't do the money shot in the middle of a porn. You do it right at the end. So hang out. We got a couple of cool things going on here. Goldie Glocks is going to bring them out. Um, we also, um, if you're having a hard time doing any of the online transactions, you're welcome to call up the ladies and chat with them. 623-249-4506. Call the office. We're here now. Thanks for coming by the virtual holiday show. We're going to do, uh, Jeff, we're going to do something again for SHOT Show, aren't we? Virtual SHOT Show. Friday, January 15th. We're going to be in our new factory. All right. So let me, let me unpack this a little bit. So we have almost doubled the size of the factory to a facility at 1.5 miles north of here. Um, I bought the building, I don't know, it was about 45 days ago we closed on the building. And uh, we, I have 25,000 feet of concrete being polished to 3,000 grit. And I've got beautiful lighting being put in and wall murals and all of this stuff to make this lovely work environment. It's got a little park off to the side for everyone to sit and eat in that's on the property. Um, the offices are beautiful, and it's going to have a really cool pro shop. We're going to put a Nexus uh, location right in the front of our factory. So I think people, it's going to be like a real destination. The factory is already really cool, but it's a little grunge. Um, this is just polished and beautiful, and it's going to uh, allow us to launch our new company, which we'll tell you guys about in January. We have a fabulous new product that we're going to launch I don't know. Did we decide January 2022 is the date on that, Jeff? January 15th. 2022. Oh, what do we call that? I'm sorry. That for, the new, for the new knife company? Oh, yeah. Blade Show 2022. Is it Blade Show 2022 or Shot Show 2022? Oh, you tell me. All right. We're going to be launching in 2022 a new knife company. We're going to let you guys know about it. And those of you who are fans and come around often and see what we're up to, you're going to see a lot of new faces taking part in the launch of the new company. Um, we've got a really cool lineup of new products coming out, uh, new, uh, a price point, all American made at our shop, everything made here in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, we're going to go head to head with, uh, we're going to go head to head with one of the biggest knife companies in the whole world. And I'm going to get in their fucking teeth. So it should be great fun. You guys, even if you don't like my ass, 
you should sit back and you should uh, you should revel in the in the audacity of Americans. Um, we're all aud- audacious people. We do stuff that who else in history has said we are free, King. Fuck you. I get all my power from the Almighty. You ain't the boss of me. Nobody's done that. You know what happens to a people collectively when you do that? You're free at your core, and every rule annoys you because you're free. That's who you people are. Some of you Americans don't even know how free you are. I see you all wearing your masks, and you step in your lines, and you follow all the rules. But we only do that because we agree to. We're free. Don't forget it this year. If we don't forget it, we take all of our freedom back. We take all of our power back. And we won't have people telling us who are not elected what we should be doing every day. Because last I knew, I didn't go to bed in the People's Republic of fucking China. Number 29. We're going to wrap it up here, folks, pretty quick. Flag. Fat daddy. On the back side. What does this say? Oh, it shall not be infringed. Number two. Second Amendment. This knife smacks of everything American. It's big, it's utilitarian, it's not trying to be the most pretty thing in the world, it's patriotic, it's for working, it's tough, there's no pretense, and it'll last forever. Super American, I love it. Number 29. How many we got all total? Two more knives. Two more. Okay, number 32, guys, this knife is so sexy in person, it's hard to capture this on camera. Um, it's got, is this, this isn't rose gold, what is this on here? It is. It is. Our new ghost abalone. Ghost abalone PVD. Yes. Rose gold uh, PVD finish on the blade. Ro- rose gold hardware to match. There is, this is an understated knife that only an aficionado would really get. Guys, if you like the Porsche 911, this is a GT3 RS America. This is a super cool, rare, subtle thing. Your average person goes, oh, that's a Porsche. And the Porsche guy goes, that's not a Porsche. That's a GT3 RS America. That's a super cool car. Number 30, our super cool GT3 RS America Praetorian tie. Guys, we're going to come around the bend with some sexy stuff here, okay? Chad Nichols did a lovely job on the Damascus that we made this blade with. I did the etching on it. My team did everything else. Jason did the sculpting on the handle. Uh, Joe did the uh, grinding and polishing on the blade. Um, I did the final uh, finish work. And then Casey and the guys in in the guys and gallon assembly put this thing together. This is about as sexy Big ass, beautiful raindrop Damascus knife as you're ever going to lay eyes on. There is nothing about this that doesn't smack of refined, good taste, fucking baller, badass, super cool, and all American fun. Number 31. And are we on to our last knife officially? Is that it? Yeah, that was it. Now we got the bonus knives. Guys, we got a couple of bonus knives for some of you who may have missed out. Uh, wait a minute. Let me try that again. Guys, we caught a couple of bonus knives. Hey, I want to thank everybody for being here. Lulu, thanks for being here. I know we get a, didn't get a chance. I know you were going to show us backflips and all that. Lindsay, a couple of handstand push-ups? Yeah. All right, come on. <laughs> Feet right here. God. I'll take you. Come on. I'll catch you. Go ahead. What about my head? Oh, you, do you have to bounce your head off the floor? I'd rather not bounce it into the floor, but I can try it. You don't, don't bounce into the floor. Do some handstand push-ups. I need you to hold my hand. I'll do it. You got it. Oh, my God. Oh, wait, that's enough. Get down. <laughs> Holy shit. Guys, uh, handstand push-ups. Off. Lindsay, awesome. Handstand push-ups in the ground really hard if you haven't tried doing them before. And she could bust them out. It's super cool. I actually felt like I was getting kicked in the face just now. Right there. That was awesome. Uh, anybody else have anything they want to add as we wrap things up? Goldie Glocks says he needs fingertips. Yeah, he's using my fingertips. Goldie yeah. Glocks. Are you going to do some handstands for us? He's got a, he's got a couple special knives. Oh, your fingers hurt. Yeah. All right, from voting, right? Yeah. Because you voted a lot. Oh, yeah. He's got a uh, where are the knives at? We got a couple special knives coming out. Oh, I got something special. All right. What's the most special you got? Or you bring it out. You bring it out when it's time. Let's come out of the gate first with an old school special. Thanks, Lou. So, guys, this is an S35 VN um, Emperor. 
This is meant to be a companion piece to the Praetorian tie. It's the exact same dimensions and pretty close in weight. This has got, Jeff, am I not, this is a two-tone. Did this thing get, yeah. Um, yeah. this has got rose, rose gold PVD on it and then it got faced? So this has got rose gold PVD everywhere on the blade. It's been pinstripe and faced. A really subtle, sexy tack knife. Pretty cool. We're going to put this up on, uh, up on here for you. And maybe I've got a little plastic dealy bob. I'm going to steal. So this is one of our crazy specialty knives. Wow. I didn't see it until I got it in the light. Now I see it big time. What else we got? Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. So is this the one that I redid for the stuff that went off uh, to Asia for the military? Or is this the one we did for the Border Patrol? Border Patrol. Oh, so we originally did this for the Border Patrol. S35 DM blade. This has got that rose gold uh, PDD on it as well. Super subtle, cool knife. This knife would be great for poking somebody in the pericardium. Give them a little poke, like if you're in, like, in a little... Uh, Let's say you're walking through a, a, a Haji village and you just want to pop a number one or a, a top 10, I got to get her. You could get them right up to the armpit. Boom. You just keep walking by, put this right back in your, uh, in your sleeve, wearing some local Pashtu uh, clothing or whatever. And you could poke a dude right in the heart with that. Fantastic. It would go in like butter, come right out. And they would go like this. Huh, something hurts. They take about 10 steps. And just like the, what is it? The five finger death punch from Kill Bill. They would just drop dead. Merry fucking Christmas. Thank you. You know, part of this is just telling the story and having a little bit of fun. So sometimes you just want to tell a little story, have a little fun. What do you guys do with your friends when you hang out? You guys hang out and drink. What do you do? Run through the facts? Hit Google? Google ruined everything. Nobody can bullshit anymore. I love doing this. I love telling outrageous stories and having the guys fact check me. And I look at them and I go, ha, ha, ha. Totally true, isn't it? Like, that's even more fun now than saying outrageous shit that you can't prove or disprove. But to say outrageous shit and then people Google check you, and then you see them, like, they take their phone out. You're telling a story, and they take their phone out, and they're like this. Now, they're either texting a booty call or they're fact-checking you. And then what they do is they go like this. They sneak it back in their pocket, and I love going, did you just fucking fact-check me? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, totally true, isn't that? It's totally true. All right, we're moving on to the last knife. What do you got, Goldie Glocks? Right. Where'd you get where did you get this knife? Where'd this come from? This came from my cousin that works over here. Your cousin that works here? Yeah. My what's his name? Jason. There's <laughs> a lot of Jasons There's that work a lot here. Of Jason. <laughs> I need to run an ad that says looking for fantastic knife making apprentice, yep. name must be Jason. Yep. Langston, that yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Um he had this one made right here and he just thought it went with my outfit. Oh, it totally goes with your outfit. Yeah. Uh, so are you donating this to the cause? Are we putting it up? Mm -hmm. um, do we know, uh, are these, how do we do the prices on this? Do they have to call to do these? Is that the deal? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, do you want me to put this up there then? You there you go. All right, guys. Yeah. So from Goldie Glocks himself, a uh, gold PVD micro Praetorian T with black opposing hardware. Guys, this knife, it's for the pimp in you. <laughs> or the cartel in you. The cartel, the pimp, the player, the gangster, the all around hustler. Have you ever seen uh, Barbershop? This is for Cedric the Entertainer. You kids got no skill. You got the nerve want to be somebody. Anyways, really cool knife. It's definitely gaudy. It is definitely fun. So if you happen to be like a Persian in Los Angeles, this might be a fucking great knife for you. Um, let's say you're uh, Jewish in Boca Raton. You might like this knife also. And if you're just a fucking baller who likes to see people's jaws drop when you take your knife out, great knife for you also. Guys, Greg Redford from Redford Knife, MKTUSA, listen. Fuck Gavin Newsom and fuck all the fear mongering. Hug your family, kiss them on the cheek, share a glass of whiskey, share a glass of eggnog, have the holidays with your friends, with your loved ones. The government's not the boss of you. Enjoy life. Protect the people at risk, of course. But enjoy life. They're not in charge of us. The cold winter of government control has to end. So I say when you raise your glass and you cheer and you toast the holidays and you give thanks, we're all going to die, but who's going to live? We are all going to die. Who's going to live? You have to live.
I want to thank a couple of people. DLT Trading, EDC Specialties, Knife Joy, the Medford guy, as Kicker, Blade HQ, Smoky Mountain, Pro Source, Lulu, Bobby Bushcraft. You guys, this is Bobby Bushcraft. Check him out on Instagram. Bobby, thanks for holding the camera for a couple hours. How you doing? Good to go. <laughs> Did you have fun? I did. Are your arms tired? No. What are you carrying? Slim Midi. Slim Midi. You like the Slim Midi, don't you? Yeah. Cool. Well, guys, thanks for stopping in. Have a great holiday. We will see you at uh, Virtual Shot Show. We've got shit going on next. We're going to keep it real. If you guys want to be ballers, hop on an airplane. Come out to Arizona. Let me tell you, free America. I don't know how we got two Democrat senators. I don't believe it for a goddamn minute. It is free out here. You can come, not wear a mask. I haven't worn a mask in nine months. You can enjoy life. You can go golfing. You can go to a hotel. You can go take your girl to a hotel and do something fun. You can go to a pool. You can go golfing. I already said golfing. You can go shooting. You can go shoot somebody. Matter of fact, you can go shoot a car that has a California license plate or Washington or Oregon or Illinois. Any one of those deep Democrat ding-dong states with their head firmly up their donkey asses, you can shoot their car on behalf of Medford Knife and Tool. We appreciate hitting the license plate on someplace vital, not a person in the car. We'd like them to say, you know what? <clears throat> Maybe it's a great time to go back from the, stu the silly state that I fucked up with my dumb wussy sentiments. Hard men make for wonderful countries. Wonderful, easy countries make for soft men. And soft men make for strange times. So hold on, sports fans. It's going to be a wild year. Medford Knife, Medford Knife Tool, I'm out!